Hello YouTube, this is SWLA Mech 84 again. It's been a while since my last video. Got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, hunting season coming up. Well, it's started now, I'm trying to get ready for that. One year old daughter and overtime at work. So, haven't had a really good chance to get out here. But this is going to be the continuation of my steady rest mod video and I'm going to do the milling operations on the uh, carrier pieces here. I'm going to be putting this groove I'm going to be putting this hole here and then I'm going to be putting this guide slot and then I'm also going to be cleaning this one up because I pinched it while I was trying to take the pin out. First thing I have to do as you can see here, I've got my fixed blade. I've already dialed my jaw in. I've dialed my jaws in so that I know that the back of it is good. My air conditioner just kicked on. <clears throat> Middle of November and it's still almost 80 degrees outside. Anyway, I've got my vise dialed in. And I need to, I don't have an edge finder or anything. I'm gonna place this blank one in the mill in the milling vise here and I need to find the center of it so that I can get my groove perfectly in the center and the way I'm going to do that take it out of there the way that I've done it without having a edge finder is that I have enough of this long 3 16ths solid carbide end mill sticking out so that I have a smooth shank up here I'm going to bring it down and using the feeler gauge, gauge when I have resistance between here, and I know it is at least that much away from the wall, I can come up, move in the distance of my feeler gauge, and I know my edge is even with my vice jaw. Then I can move over to compensate for the diameter of the bit so that I'm center line with the edge of the vice jaw. And then I can come back this direction, the radius of this piece, and I'll know that I'm in center line. And then for this right here, that's plenty good enough. It'll I'll be within a five to ten thousandths from center if I take my time. And I've checked it before, and it, it works well for me. I don't have to buy any expensive tooling or anything. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this down so that the shank is protruding into the jaw. I don't know if you can see that here. Got a pretty bad lighting situation. Okay. And then I'm going to insert my feeler gauge. And then I'm going to bring my bit back until I get a good resistance. Okay, there I know that I've got ten thousands. And I'm not putting any stress on the bit. Of course, that carbide bit, if I put too much stress on it, it will just snap. So now I'm going to come up. Zoom back out here. And now I know that this edge of the bit is, with the, is ten thousands off of this face of my jaw. I have a little dashboard dial indicator set up here. I'll swing you around so you can see that. Okay, I'm going to set my dashboard dial at zero. So the back of my bit is ten thousandths off the face of my jaw. So I need to move the bit this direction, ten thousandths, so that the edge will be flush with it. Okay. 
Okay, and I read ten thousandths on my dial. And just by line of sight, I can see that it is lined up on the edge. Now I'm going to reset my dial for zero. And this is a 0.188 bit. I'm going to leave it at 0.188. I know it's 0.1875, but so that I can do it in my head right here while I'm standing, it's going to be 0.188. So I'm going to go in that away 50 thousandths and then 40 thousandths, 44 thousandths. So there's my 50 thousandths. That gets me a 100 thousandths center. And I'm going to reset my dial to zero. And then I'm going to go in 44 thousandths. Okay, now the center line of my bit is in line with the back face of my jaw. I'm going to move my indicator out a little, or in rather. Get close zero. Okay. Now I need to come off of the face of my jaw this direction, half of the diameter of my workpiece because it will be snugged up against this fixed jaw. And the diameter of my workpiece is 0.704. So that's, I need to come in 350. That's 100, 200, 300, 50. And then an extra two thousandths. And now my bit is centered in this groove. Once I put my workpiece in and snug it up, I'll just show you how it looks from the side so you can get a better grasp on it. Of course, my handles in the way. So you can see that it looks centered and as long as I did my math and I kept my indicator correct then it is centered. So that's good. Now I need to set the depth. I'm going to cut this top groove first here. So I'm going to go ahead and insert the one that I've already cut. And I'm going to come down with my bit. Make sure I don't snag the edge. It's really easy to break the corner off of those carbide end mills. Slide it into the groove. Come down until I, I touch. And then on this milling machine, I'm going to set my depth indicator here. I can adjust that so that I know when to stop. And I'll just put it on four, that way I have an easy reference. Pull this plastic cover off here so I can see it better. All right. And then I'm going to go until I just pass up the black on the line next to number four. So now I know as I'm going down where I need to stop my depth at. Because I do have a lot of bit protruding here. This distance is very long. So I'm going to take very small bites. It's going to take a little while to take all that off of there. So I'm going to load my part up. Make sure I'm cutting it on the right end here. Make sure I stay nice and square. Clamp it down pretty good. And I'm going to get my loop 
application, my cutting fluid, move my tools. Get Mr. Keith Fenner's lubrication system here. And I'm gonna get my groove cut. Also, I'm gonna lock my table so that I don't get any extra movement that I don't want. Got some table locks there. this real quick. By the cut on it I can kind of gauge just to make sure that I am actually centered on there. Okay. And that groove is being cut for this bearing right here. And I have to widen it. The 1875 of the bit itself isn't wide enough. This is where my dashboard dial comes in handy. Which I still have connected right here. I can move it in and out from my zero and take a couple thousands per side just so that I can get the, the right fit I want on that bearing. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm set at zero on my dashboard dial. So I want to move advance one direction. say two thousandths. I'm going to lock my carriage down and I'm going to take that off of one side. Okay, I'm going to unlock my carriage. I'm going to go back to zero. Then I'm going to go two thousandths on the other side and cut that. And I'm going to check that. And that's still pretty far off there. Go ahead and make a measurement on this bearing. Let's see. Measure this bearing. This bearing is 195. And we're at 188. Right now we're at 192 because I added two thousands per side. So I need to add another thousand and a half per side. So I'll just make it two thousands per side. I'm going to go ahead and increase to four thousandths and take a cut there. And I'm going to flop to the other side. Take four thousand. Take another two thousand. I'm just widening this groove 
ever so slightly, and that's a pretty, that's, I could press that in there. So I'm getting pretty close. I'm going to take another thousand. Because I do want a pretty snug fit on here. Then go to the other side. And now that, that'll snap in there. I'm going to take another two thousands. Actually, I'm going to take another thousandth. I'm going to sneak up on it. Each, th each thousandth per side I take is widening that groove two thousandths. And right now, I've widened it six thousandths per side. Get a little air in there. And that's a pretty, pretty good fit right there. It's loose, but it also doesn't allow any wiggle. Get my hand out of there. I'm trying to listen to my comments on my videos and there's just no way I can grab that bearing without putting a hairy arm in front of the camera. So bear with me. All right. So I'm happy with that. That fits that bearing pretty good. If it gets too tight, if it seems to be too tight, then I'll just take some off with a file or some sandpaper. And my battery's about dead on my camera, so that's going to be part one of getting these milling operations done on this piece. And I'll try to get out here tomorrow afternoon to get the other hole. Let me grab the piece. If I can find it. I'll be out here tomorrow and I'll punch the hole for the pin and I'll cut the groove for the guide pin. And that's it for tonight. Thank you.